Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, definitely make sure to subscribe. So today we're going to be reacting to Nickelodeon is done. Exposed childhood ruined. Now I've already seen some glimpse of what's been going on because of TikTok. It's always freaking TikTok. But anyways, y'all, let's get into the video. Oh wow, this is... This is insane. If you grew up watching all that, The Amanda Show and Drake and Josh, things might never be the same for you looking back after watching the new Investigation Discovery series on Max called Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, where former child stars and ex-Nick employees are sitting down to expose the network, detailing shocking and horrifying events that happened behind the scenes You're done. and even making you rethink some of the content that was put out there for children to view. I recently talked about how Dan Schneider has responded to the series, but we're going to be talking about some of the biggest revelations from the series, along with how the public has responded and some other former Nick stars, which has actually gotten them in some trouble. In the past, I've talked about what's been said about the famous kids network as former child stars such as Jeanette McCurdy have come out to talk about their experience on set. When Jeanette released her memoir two years ago, in it she included several shocking revelations from her years working at Nickelodeon, things that happened on set and behind the scenes between her and her mom. In the book, Jeanette detailed the exploitation she faced at the hands of someone named The Creator. The Creator was Dan Schneider, a former Nickelodeon executive, the one responsible for shows such as iCarly, Sam and Cat, Zoe 101, Victorious, The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, all that, Keenan and Kel, and several others. He was the network's golden boy and responsible you sick for bastard. so many careers. But he's also sick, who has sick, sicko. Against him, and over years, people have grown disgusted by what they've heard about him. And rewatching a lot of these shows back, the things that are written into them have people completely sick by him and the network. Nickelodeon announced in 2018 that they would no longer be working with Dan, and there were several publications that have reported on complaints about Dan's alleged behavior, including his alleged well-documented temper issues. An internal investigation had been done with the company, and they claimed to have found that he was difficult to work with and prone to tantrums and angry emails but says any other misconduct was not found during the investigation. Despite that being what the network claimed, for years now his name has been thrown around with accusations of being inappropriate. Mm. In the next book, she opened up about her negative experience But my thing is, why wait all of a sudden to fire him? Now correct me if I'm wrong, hasn't people spoken up way before the, now about this dude? Correct me if I'm wrong, but why now? Why now are they firing him? Why now expose him? Why didn't they fire him before? On set of iCarly with claims that she would be visibly uncomfortable on set, recalling a time during a kissing scene with her co-star Nathan Kress that she was being shouted at by the creator and had to reshoot the scene several times. Jeanette also wrote about being pictured in a bikini at a wardrobe fitting and having the creator encourage her to drink alcohol, despite not being of drinking age. What? She said her mom was present for some of the things that happened while working on set, but would brush anything negative off as just this being a part of Hollywood. Following her exit from Nickelodeon, she claims she was offered $300,000 from Nickelodeon to never speak publicly about her experience there, and she declined the offer. And since the release of the investigation- Standing on business. Interviews, people have been speculating on who might have actually taken that hush money believing that she couldn't have been the only one to have been given an offer like that yeah honestly she's not the only one that's gotten an offer like that there's no way no way that nobody else got offered hush money and i i don't know if this is true or not but i saw a clip on tiktok that um supposedly josh from drake and josh i don't know his real name um that he became a big star after drake kind of like fell off or something and um they believe that they paid him to not say anything or to stay quiet or what did he go through since drake was also very impacted by nickelodeon so i'm like you know i be seeing stuff and i'm like hmm you got a point but then again it's like you never really know so let's not make assumptions i don't know if this is true or not but it just kind of makes you think like when stuff like this gets brought out to like the world and stuff you really be seeing stuff from a lot of people's perspectives truly discussed so much it was very disturbing i must warn with tons of triggering topics and the fact that this will make you remember these childhood shows much differently afterwards 
The four-part docuseries focused heavily on Dan, his career, and what he was bringing to set. Two female writers for The Amanda Show were featured in the documentary, having said that working with Dan was like being in an abusive relationship. They claimed he didn't think women were funny. They also said that he would play adult content on his computer and make people do uncomfortable things like give him massages. Which, since the release of the Quiet On Set docuseries, Dan had come forward in a video he posted to his YouTube channel where he did admit to the massages. One writer, Jenny, and her lawyer filed complaints against the production company for gender discrimination, hostile work environment, and harassment. A settlement was reached, but she says her career suffered from this as a result. And speaking of The Amanda Show, several points were made about this show in the series. People found so many moments uncomfortable from these shows that Dan was behind, and this was one of them. There was a scene discussed where he is in a hot tub with a very young Amanda Bynes, which just feels so unnecessary. She was a child in a swimsuit, and he's a grown man. Like, why are they in a hot tub together for a scene? It was also made known that one of the characters that she played on a sketch in The Amanda Show show was Penelope Taint and writers in the docuseries claimed Dan was inspired by the word taint and he wanted to be like his little secret that that's what the word was and tons of people have just been shocked and disgusted to learn this because from their memory it was Penelope Tate but this is just unbelievable it just felt like in so many of these shows that though they were supposed to be for kids they wanted to have kids do these very adult like things almost to just try and see what they could get away with I do remember that when I was a kid my mom did not like me watching the Amanda show or all that funny things yeah I remember okay I had a cousin right where sh her dad never let her watch like nickelodeon um disney channel like he was very against those like platforms like he would not let them watch disney channel nickelodeon and like as a kid i was like dang why but it's like now i kind of understand I used to think he was just very, like, overprotective, very controlling. And now it's like, dang, he probably saw stuff that we didn't. But then again, we're just kids. We're innocent. We don't really see the shit until we grow up and we're like, yo, that's kind of that's kind of inappropriate for kids our age to be watching. But since we're kids, we don't really understand. Just like if you sometimes watch movies, like, you, you'll be catching, like, the adult jokes that kids won't understand, but it's like still like those shouldn't be incorporated in there. Whenever she would sit down and see me watching it. And I always thought it was so ridiculous because I'm watching a freaking kids show, you know? But now as an adult watching this back, I'm like, oh my gosh, I see I loved why her. She didn't want me to watch this. Like she was very much seeing the things that everyone is seeing now. But I did see a ton of other people on TikTok talking about the fact that their parents also said the same thing about not wanting them to watch this show because they found something weird about it. Fans have heavily wondered what happened to Amanda Bynes over the years as Dan Schneider was so heavily involved in her life and her career. It seems he saw her as his ticket out of children's television, but in the end, it didn't work out for him following her, and he came back to prioritizing children's programming again. And there's just so many questionable scenes that he was responsible for, like we talked about the Amanda show, but looking back, they also showed scenes of Ariana Grande from Victorious where she's pouring water on herself while she's laying in a bed and it just isn't appropriate at all that's there just so seems to be weird so many adult innuendos happening in the scenes of these shows there's also one where she's playing with this pickle shaped toy and then later on tries to gag herself while telling a joke what she's also seen squeezing a potato in one of the other scenes and watching it back the adults being interviewed for this series were shocked that this was even aired on nickelodeon there was also discussions of how certain stars were treated over others as the All That alums Ryan and Giovanni discussed their experiences on set. Ryan talked about how he felt racially stereotyped in the roles given to him as a rapper named Will Fetus and a teen who sold cookies in a Girl Scout sketch that was basically a reference to drug dealing. He also said his mom had called out odd behavior on set when they were talking about a lot of the things that have since come out about predators on That's set. That's crazy. She was noticing some weird stuff. And to get into one of the very dark topics of this series, Drake Bell was a huge part in this. 
And at first, a lot of people weren't interested in what he had to say, given that in 2021, he had pleaded guilty to a felony charge of attempted child endangerment and misdemeanor charge of disseminating matter harmful to juveniles related to inappropriate text he sent to a teenage girl in 2017. He was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service. But in the series, it seemed to reveal- Wait, what? I did not know that at all. That's insane. Wow. I didn't know that. He had suffered horrible things as a child himself while acting on Nickelodeon by his dialogue coach, Brian Peck, whom he was introduced to on set of the second season of the There you go with them damn pickles, dude. Clear because tons of people have been asking after hearing his name, but Brian Peck has no relationship to Josh Peck. This was the first time that Drake was speaking out about the abuse that he had endured during his time in Nickelodeon. He said Brian had befriended him and would invite him to his house for acting lessons and horrific acts had occurred. And it wasn't until now that it's been revealed that Drake was the unnamed minor in the 2004 conviction of Brian Peck. It was extremely hard Damn. to listen to this part, mostly because Drake Bell's father had really noticed Brian's behavior and was very weary about Drake hanging out with him, did not want him to be left alone with him. He even at one point had expressed concerns that he felt about Brian's behavior towards Drake to people at the network, but he was dismissed. They were just like, oh, that's just how he is. He's really friendly. But Drake's dad did not trust him, and rightfully so. But Brian got very close with Drake, ended up convincing him that his dad was not being a good manager, and Drake went on to be cared for by his mom. Drake's dad tried to warn his mom not to let Drake be alone with Brian, but that ended up being what happened in the end. That oh, because I was thinking, I was like, I saw a clip, right, where... um he came out and started talking about what he went through but right now that they're talking about the dad it doesn't make sense to me that he even saw it didn't like it then the mom got custody so it's technically i'm not gonna say it but y'all know what i'm thinking once Brian had convinced him to not really have his dad in his life anymore. In talking about what happened to him behind closed doors with Brian, he went on to say that one day he was on the phone with his mother and just exploded. He told her everything and his mom called the police and Brian was arrested. According to the Los Angeles Police Department release, officers arrested Brian on August 19, 2003. Court records show that he pleaded no contest to two charges and the court found him guilty on both. He served more than a year in jail and was made to register as an S offender. And I know we're talking about Nickelodeon here. He needs prison time. He said about children's television as a whole in general in the way that it did not seem like anyone was out to protect children back then. And hopefully things are better now, but I just don't know. But it was made known that after all of this, after everything, after he had to register as an offender, Still got a job at Disney working on the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody doing voiceover work. And it's because he was a very connected man. He had a lot of people that he knew in the industry. And that is what is so scary. I don't care how connected you are. Why do you have access to children? You're registered as a s offender. That just makes me look at Disney weird. Like, what are you guys doing? Why is he able to still work there? Correct me if I'm wrong, but once you're in the list of an S offender, you're not allowed to go near kids. So why was that allowed? Cops would know. They know all this information. He was working with kids. Why was it allowed? Even the cops are an issue. Just because he's connected. Scary about the industry is that people are so connected and they're willing to look the other way and believe one person because of money and power and things like that and it's just so disgusting especially when you hear about the fact that drake talked about when they went to court he was on one side of the room with his mom and his brother and brian had all these people big name people show up for him in the courthouse supporting him and drake had to give a statement and he made a statement to those people calling them out for being there to support someone who hurt him and i just can't believe that People sat there and knew what he had done to Drake Bell, and they were willing to just sit there. It was exactly. also revealed that people that knew Brian also wrote letters to defend his character, and a lot of these people weren't just family and friends. They were 
big name stars, you guys, were writing these letters to defend Who? Brian. And it's not known if they knew, you know, what exactly went on in this case at the time of them writing the letters. And these might not be the same people that were in the courtroom that day. So they might have not even known that Drake was involved in this. But there were 41 people who wrote character letters for Brian. And some of these people, they were victim blaming, you guys. They were saying that, you know, maybe he was tempted. Like, what are you talking about? A grown man what? By a child? Like, How does a grown man get tempted by a kid? How old was Drake when all this happened? How do you get tempted by a child? That's insane. 41 letters, y'all. That is 41 people that... No, they knew. They knew. There's no way you're going to sit here and tell me that they didn't know. This man was very connected, and he probably has shit on a lot of people in that industry, which is why he even got that many letters. These things were just unbelievable that were written in these letters. One of the bigger names that has been revealed to defend Ryan at the time and write a letter was actor James Marsden. No way! Ryan since he was a teenager. Will Friedel and Ryder Strong from Boy Meets World also wrote letters. I don't know who the fuck this is. To say that they regret supporting him. The doc also named Alan Thick, Taryn Killam, Joanna Kearns, Kimmy Robertson, and Tom DeSanto as some who also wrote letters back then. And something that is just so upsetting who else? that Taryn was we need the list. a leader in an episode of Drake and Josh. And Isn't that the dude from Enchanted? I don't know who the hell the them other crackers were, but wasn't the the first dude in Enchanted? You're up. I'm not watching any movie with you in it. Drake and Josh was shot after all of this happened, where they went to court and Brian was arrested. So to know that Taryn wrote that letter and then they work together is just crazy. I mean, he might not have ever known that Drake was involved in that case and Drake probably never knew that he had written that letter because those letters were sealed until now but it's crazy to look back on that and realize in a statement two people nickelodeon said now that drake bell has disclosed his identity as the plaintiff in the 2004 case we are dismayed and saddened to learn of the trauma he has endured and we commend and support the strength required to come forward Facts. other details about brian were later revealed as all that cast member kyle sullivan revealed that in his home brian had a signed self-portrait painting of infamous serial killer john wayne gacy and that the two of them had developed a pen pal relationship he kept piles of letters and photos from john in his nightstand next to his bed truly what is isn't that the 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 serial killer the killer clown them niggas was pen pals throw the key is not enough for that man hell no wow pen pals Bro, you're weird. You're weird, dude. You're weird. Like, nigga, I hope you choke on those fucking pickles, bro. Like, you're so, so weird. That people like this were just walking around Nickelodeon, working with children. And he wasn't the only employee to be arrested at Nickelodeon for this type of behavior. Two other Nickelodeon employees at the time had also been arrested for things involving children. And as a result of all of this, people have really just been rethinking the content that they were watching on Nickelodeon as a child and really reflecting on the things being said here. And at the end of the series, there is a black screen that says that Nickelodeon told producers that the network investigates all formal complaints as part of our commitment to fostering a safe and professional workplace. We have adopted numerous safeguards over the years to help ensure we are living up to our own high standards and the expectations of our audience. I think at this point, a lot of people are just side-eyeing the network as a whole, though. Hell but yeah. as a result of the series she, I out, loved her. discussions have been had all over online with people calling on former Nickelodeon stars to use their platforms to speak out, which I will say this seems wrong. I mean, we cannot ask people to speak out not knowing what their experiences might have been. That's they true. might not feel comfortable or want to talk about something like this. It might be triggering. You just don't know. So that seems really inappropriate for people to be asking people to speak I out hope they're all okay, yo. In other people's lives. But... Something else inappropriate that has been called out, though, I will say, is the cast of Ned's Declassified, who all have a podcast together, were live the other day seemingly joking about the series, and people found the whole thing to be in Them three? very poor taste. 
Come. Daniel, I told you. <laughs> Daniel, we told you never to speak about that. Get back in your hole, Daniel, and give me your holes. Sorry, we shouldn't joke about this. We really shouldn't. This is awful. Why are we doing this? Because this is about us. Listen, our set was not like that. Um, uh, and no, it's an awful. The, the the Drake belt is a like that's crazy to hear. I I that is. And, and, how are you gonna joke around about somebody's trauma then go around and say no, it's not funny? What? Either he's he was personally victimized as well and he's trying to hide it by the jokes or you're just a terrible person. And that never came out, which is really wild. Drake Bell responded, co-tweeting this on Twitter saying, Ned's to classless. This is wild. Laugh it up, guys. Laugh it up. Give me your holes? Really? And the cast has been receiving tons of backlash since this has gone around. I don't know why they thought to even say the things that they did in this, but they are definitely hearing it from the public. That's for Good. Sure. Everyone just seems to be- Don't watch that shit. Come out from the series and wants to see the end of the network, or at least proof that they've made some sort of concrete change to the way that children stars are treated. I think the Kids' Choice Awards this year are going to be heavily protested, in my opinion. But yeah. as of right now, that is what has been said since the series has come out and what was revealed. Let me know if you guys watched it and your thoughts on it. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, guys. That's insanity, y'all. I cannot understand. Like, I just don't know. Like, what really shook me was the whole pen pal thing with John Gacy whatever the hell his name was like weird